Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text is taken from our gospel lesson, Luke, or excuse me, Matthew chapter 11, beginning with verse 2. Matthew writes, When John heard in prison about the deeds of the Christ, he sent word by his disciples and said to him, Are you the one who is to come, or shall we look for another? And Jesus answered them, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear, and the dead are raised up, and the poor have good news preached to them. And, and blessed, blessed is the one who is not offended by me. Thus far the text. Please be seated. Dear fellow redeemed in Christ, what if I was wrong? That thought, that question, that doubt may have been going through John's mind as he sat in prison. What if I was wrong about Jesus of Nazareth? You see, John had had his mountaintop experience when he baptized his cousin. He heard the Father speak from heaven. He saw the Holy Spirit descend in the form of a dove down upon Jesus. Believing that Jesus was the Messiah was easy. John spent his adult life calling people to repentance and faith. The Messiah was coming, John proclaimed. And he would establish the kingdom of God. There would be a day of reckoning. There would be fiery judgment. Evil would be cast down. Righteousness and holiness would prevail. Jesus, John had said, was this Messiah. That was then. But this is now. Things were different now for John. Back then, John wasn't sitting in a jail cell, uncertain of his future. From John's point of view, it didn't look very much like the kingdom of God had come. Not only had there not been any judgment, but one could see that evil rather than righteousness was in control. It makes sense now, our text. When John heard in prison about the deeds of the Christ... He sent word by his disciples and said to him, Are you the one who is to come? Or shall we look for another? Maybe you can relate to the frustration that John seems to be going through at the moment. You probably had some sort of mountaintop experience yourself. Maybe it was your simple childlike faith when you were young. And when you went to Sunday school and heard the Sunday school teacher talk about Jesus. Maybe it was your confirmation day, that grand and glorious day after your training in the faith as a, as a young person. And then you profess that faith, that you would rather die than give up that faith. Maybe that was your mount, mountaintop experience. Maybe it was when you came to faith later on in life as an adult. When you heard the word of God. And the Holy Spirit worked down inside of you and, and you came to believe in Jesus as the Messiah. You were on fire for the faith and you wanted to tell other people about Jesus. Believing in Jesus, believing that he was your Savior, seemed easy. You've spent your life as a faithful Christian and a faithful church member. You've tried pointing people to Jesus Christ. You've tried encouraging inactive members to return to faithful discipleship. You knew it was important. You knew that they would benefit from that, just as you have benefited from it. There was going to be a day of judgment. You knew that. Evil would be done away with, and everything would be put right again. But now you look around. And you may not be sitting in prison, but life 
maybe isn't going as smoothly or as comfortably as you thought it might. Perhaps from your point of view, it doesn't look like the kingdom of God is alive and thriving in our world. Evil and not good always seems to prevail in our society. Righteousness and holiness are in short supply. Have you ever been tempted to ask the question that John asks in our text for today? Are you the one who is to come? Or shall we look for another? Is Jesus the one? Is he the answer to life's problems? We hear so often from so many voices out there. They tell you to believe in this God or that God or that Messiah or that person. It can get rather confusing. Is Jesus the one? Is he our hope for the future? Or shall we look for someone else? When asked the question by John through his disciples, Jesus doesn't bat an eye. Neither does he get into a theological discussion with them, nor does he try to argue the point. Jesus simply says, go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight and the lame walk. Lepers are cleansed and the deaf hear and the dead are raised up and the poor have good news preached to them. Now, to you and me, it might sound like Jesus is dodging the question, but he isn't. Is Jesus the Messiah? Is he the one who was to come? The one who would usher in the kingdom of God? To those questions, to these doubts, Jesus is giving an enthusiastic and unqualified yes. Yes. Now, Jesus doesn't specifically say yes, but he sure meant it. The Old Testament lesson from Isaiah talks about the coming Messiah. The Lord, through the prophet, says, Say to those who have an anxious heart, Be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, with the recompense of God. He will come and save you. When the Messiah, God incarnate, comes, then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap like a deer and the tongue of the mute sing for joy. You see, Jesus is pointing to this prophecy and he is saying, look around at what I'm doing. It's what the prophets said the Messiah would do. That is what I'm doing. Go ahead, connect the dots. I am he. But if you look a little closer, you would notice that Jesus is saying more than, yes, I am the Messiah. In fact, his last line in his response in our, in our text, our verses for today in verse 6, seems rather odd. He says, and, the, and blessed is the one who is not offended by me. Now, we might wonder, why would anyone be offended by Jesus? Yet, for some, it's not what he was doing that is being the Messiah that was offensive, but it was how Jesus was doing it. That became offensive. You see, John looked around and all he saw was evil, evil around him at every place. If Jesus is the Messiah, then why is there still evil? It is a good question. Have you ever wondered that yourself? If Jesus is God and God is good, then why is there so much bad in our world? Well, the Bible has an answer for that question. You see, the kingdom of God would not be established by merely dealing with the symptoms of sin. And that's what these things are. All the bad, all the evil that we see around us, they're the symptoms of sin. 
And God's kingdom would not be established by merely dealing with those symptoms. If you have an infection, putting a Band-Aid on it doesn't help all that much. You've got to get at the infection. You've got to take the medicine to kill the infection. And that's what Jesus came to do. He didn't come to just put a Band-Aid over our sin. He came to defeat our sin. The diseases and the struggles and the turmoils we face, these are symptoms of sin. Nor would evil be overcome that easy. The reign of God would enter the world through the humiliation of God. God would establish his kingdom not by conquering and killing, killing sinful rebels like you and me. Rather, he would establish his kingdom by his son, Jesus Christ, who came to be a servant, who offered up himself, who died on the cross as payment for all of our sins, indeed the sins of the whole world. His death overcame sin and Satan, and his resurrection from the dead confirmed his victory. God's kingdom has been established, but it is not found in any massive, visible, earthly territory. Rather, God's kingdom is invisibly in the hearts of people whom the Holy Spirit has called by the gospel, enlightened with his gifts, and sanctified in the one true faith. The kingdom is not established, nor does it grow through mass marketing techniques or the latest religious fads. There are a dime a dozen. You can see them all out there. The humble kingdom comes through humble means, through the word of God, through the washing of water in that word, through the words of a faithful yet fallible preacher, and through the eating and drinking of the Lord's Supper. Through these means, the kingdom of God continues to grow and expand throughout our congregation, throughout our community, and even throughout our world. If you ever become like John the Baptist and are tempted to ask that question, are you the one who is to come or shall we look for another? Jesus just might give you a similar answer as the one he gave to the disciples of John. Go and see. Go and tell what you hear and see. You see, even today, Jesus remains the Messiah of the world. He still does what the Messiah is supposed to do. He still is calling individuals through, to faith through the word of God. He is still washing away sins of the people one by one in holy baptism. He is still feeding his people on his body and blood. He is still giving out the forgiveness of sins. And therefore, Jesus encourages each and every one of us here today to go ahead to connect the dots. And there you will find that his answer is a resounding yes. He is the one. He is who he said he is. He did what he said he would do. And he gives what he promises to give. The forgiveness of sins. And everlasting life to all who believe. When John declared Jesus the Messiah... Was he wrong? No, he wasn't wrong. And neither are you when you proclaim Jesus the Messiah. Jesus Christ is the one who has come. He is the one who is coming again. Amen. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.